Hey guys, we are going to solve this rational inequality. Now, as we solve this, I'm going to give you some pretty specific steps to follow. And you might be like, okay, that's cool, but why did we do that? That seems random. And at the end, I'm going to show you why we did what we did and why it worked. And guys, it's so cool. So I hope you stick around for that. All right. When I'm solving these, it is, we, well, we want it to be zero on one side and our problem on the other side. It just makes it a lot easier to work with. The next thing we want to do is factor anything that can be factored. So my top's going to stay the same, x minus 1. And then I will link a factoring review if you need it. But I'm just going to tell you that this factors to x minus 4 times x plus 2 on the bottom. And we are still less than or equal to 0. All right, now that I'm factored, from here, I'm going to set each of these equal to zero. So I'm going to have x minus 1 equals zero, x minus 4 equals zero, and x plus 2 equals zero. And then I'm going to solve each of these for x. So on this one, I would add 1 to both sides, get x equals 1. Add 4 to both sides, get x equals 4, and subtract 2 from both sides and get x equals 2. All right, what's next is a number line. Yes, we love number lines. All right, I'm going to, I want to represent each of these numbers on my number line. So it's going to be something like 1, 4, and negative 2. Your spacing doesn't have to be perfect. This is just to help me visualize it. All right, I want to represent each of these and I need to know if I need an open or a closed circle. So right off, I know that four and negative two are going to be open circles. How do I know that you ask? Well, if I were to plug those guys in negative, sorry, four or negative two, it would make my denominator zero, which is one of the biggest no-nos in math. So I know that we can't be negative two or four, so we're going to have open circles. Now at one, that guy's not in the denominator, wouldn't make the denominator zero. So I go ahead and look at this sign, and because it's less than or equal to, this is going to be a closed circle. If that equal to wasn't there, it would be an open circle. All right, from here, we are going to do what we like to affectionately call sign analysis. I want to know in each of these regions, to the left of negative 2, between these guys, between these guys, and to the right of 4, are we dealing with positives or negatives? So all I need to do is first I'm going to pick a number to the left of negative 2. So let's just pick negative 10. Remember if you're going, why is she doing this? I'm going to explain it, make it clear at the end, and I hope it'll be like an aha moment, like, oh my gosh. So if I plug in negative 10, the thing about sign analysis is I'm not really concerned about when I plug in negative 10 for x, what the number answer is. I only care if it's positive or negative. So when I plug this in, I'm just going to think, okay, if I were to plug in negative 10, I'd get negative 10 minus 1, which would be a negative number on top. On bottom, I'd have negative 10 minus 4, which would give me a negative number, and negative 10 plus 2, which would also give me a negative number. So then on top, I have a negative. On bottom, I'd have a negative times a negative, which is positive. And when I divide a negative by a positive, I get a negative. So this region to the left of 2 is going to be negative. All right, now I want to pick a number between negative 2 and 1. Well, 0 is in there, so let's pick 0. When I plug in 0, I have 0 minus 1, which would give me a negative on top. 0 minus 4, which would give me a negative on bottom. 0 plus 2, which would give me a positive on bottom. Then I've got a negative on top, negative times a positive on bottom, which would be negative, and a negative divided by a negative is 
you got it positive. So this region here is positive. What about from one to four? Let's just pick two. Plug in two. Two minus one would give me a positive on top. Two minus four would give me a negative on bottom. Two plus two would give me a positive on bottom. Positive on top, negative times a positive on bottom, which would be negative. Positive divided by negative, which is negative. Whew. I'm talking a lot. Okay, now I need any number to the right of four. Let's just pick 10 and see what that region looks like, positive or negative. All right, 10 minus one would give me a positive. 10 minus four would give me a positive. 10 plus two gives me a positive. And all those positives end up being positive. So this region is positive. Okay, back to this problem. I'm wondering where this is less than or equal to zero. Well, what is less than or equal to zero is, well, zero and negative numbers, right? So where are we negative? We figured out which regions were negative. To the left of negative two and one to four, not including four. That's where I was negative. So that's my answer. If I plug in any number to the left of two for X, I plug it in for all the X's, I will make this statement true. I will get a number over here that is less than or equal to zero. Or if I plug in one or any number more than one, but less than four in this region, if I plug a number that fits in there for X, it will make this statement true, all right? So this is my answer. But your teacher, I don't know, maybe they don't care, but they might not want you to hand in a graph as an answer. I mean, maybe. But they probably want it either in inter uh, your answer stated as an inequality or in um, interval notation. Because I always forget what interval notation is called whenever I'm recording one of these. So there you go. Interval notation. So if I were to set this up, this answer as an inequality, I would say, well, you can plug in any number for X that is less than negative 2. Any number that's less than negative 2, you plug it in, it'll make this statement true. Or, that's not all, there's another little section we can also do. Wherever x is less than 4, and then we have 1 as well, right? And the x is bigger, so it's eating the x, right? So 1 is less than or equal to x is less than 4. That represents this area. This one is equal to... I should say, <clears throat> sorry, less than or equal to because of that closed circle. All right, so that is one way to state my answer. Or if you wanted to write it in interval notation, I would say you can pick any number from negative infinity to negative two. Both of those get parentheses because, well, infinity and negative infinity always get parentheses. Negative two gets a parenthesis because it can't actually be negative two. It's just acting as a boundary. And then we say we put a U for union or this is together with and we want to represent this guy by saying you can also pick a number from one to four. One gets a bracket because you can actually pick one because if I plug in one, I'm going to get zero and zero is less than or equal to zero works. To four, four gets a parenthesis because you can't actually pick four. All right, great, that's my answer, but stick around guys, because guess what? I'm gonna show you why this worked and it's so cool. All right, pretend for a second that I wanted to graph this. Don't run and hide because I said graph, it's gonna be okay. If I wanted to graph this guy, I would. Okay, first of all, I'm not gonna go into a ton of like specifics on how to graph this because I actually have a whole video where I graph this exact equation that I'll link in the corner. So I'm just going to quickly graph it. If I were to graph this first, I would find my vertical asymptotes by setting these guys equal to zero. So I would figure out that my asymptotes are at four and I got to get faster at drawing dotted lines. Four <laughs> and negative two. 
Those are my vertical asymptotes. And then I would figure out by looking at the degree of um, the numerator and the denominator that my horizontal asymptote is at zero, which is always kind of hard to show on here because it's right on the y axis, or sorry, x axis. Just know there's an asymptote there. Um, and then what I would do next would be to figure out my x intercept by setting this equal to zero, and I would figure out that my x intercept is at one. Then applying what I know about these graphs and asymptotes and everything, I would figure out that this graph looks like this. Dun, dun, dun. This is my graph humming music. Okay, it looks something like that. All right, you're like, that's great. Why do we care? All right, remember what we were originally trying to figure out is where this was less than or equal to zero. Well, look at my graph, people. Less than or equal to zero. Where are we less than or equal to zero? Oh, pretend like I put that real nice the first time. We are less than or equal to zero from negative infinity, because that keeps going that way, to negative two. But we can't actually be negative two, that's my asymptote. And then we're also less than zero from one, to four, but we can't actually be four because that's the asymptote. Guys, that's what we figured out. When we set <clears throat> all of these things equal to zero, we were actually finding our x-intercept and these were our asymptotes, our vertical asymptotes. Look it, isn't that so cool? And then this sign analysis, stuff that we did, that was just figuring out which direction the graph went in each of these sections. See how it's negative, positive, negative, <clears throat> positive. Guys, isn't that so cool? That's why we did what we did. All right, I hope this helped. If you need some more examples, I will link a playlist for you. Thanks.